from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight I have with me three great guests from different nonprofits in the area. You're going to learn a lot about some wonderful things going on in your community. First we're going to talk with the Community Energy Project. Here I have with me Sherry Smith. Hi. Welcome Sherry. Thanks. She's the Community en Engagement Manager at uh, Community Energy Project and Artie Kelly, the Office Assistant Intern. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you both here. So, um, Sherry, maybe you could start by telling me a little bit about the Community Energy Project, how it got started, what your mission is, some of the basics. Sure. Uh, Community Energy Project started in 1979 during the energy crisis at mm. that time. We started off giving small workshops in people's living rooms, teaching people how to weatherize their own homes. And uh, back then, this opaque plastic was put on the outside yes, of your windows. I remember and then that. frames were hammered on the uh, outside, and Not that's how it was put no. on. No, our stuff is much, much more attractive now. Um, uh, later on, we added in um, programs for seniors and people with disabilities that we still continue. We um, go out in homes and weatherize homes. And in the past few years, we also make safety-related repairs to those mm. homes. And the last big piece that we do is we do a lot of lead poisoning prevention education. So we have free workshops on how to live in an older home with mm -hmm. lead and stay safe. And we have a second level uh, class on how to do a lead to paint disturbing project in a safe way. Hmm. We still give our weatherization workshops, we give them all over the Portland area. I think this year we're giving 60 workshops wow. total and yeah several times a week this time of year and they're very popular. I bet this time of year is really busy for you. Yes, yes. it is. So Artie what do you do at Community Energy Project? Well I answer the phones mm -hmm. and um, also help to refer people. Sometimes they call in for other issues okay. and I have my referral sheets and I you kind of like a crisis line. <laughs> In a way, yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially if people are at a point where their electricity's uh, going to be turned off. That's and, a scary and this thing. Time of the, yeah, and this time of year especially. So are you able to refer them to social service agencies that can most help them the with time that? Most of other nonprofits. Yeah, yeah. The most popular place we refer to is 211. Ah, which is a resource, yes, right? I just uh, had them on center. the show here last week. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we for, you know, refer a lot of people to them. Good, good. And then there's other issues they call in on. And I do a lot of the data entry from the workshops. And I'm also involved with the in-home services that going out to the seniors and disabled oh, okay. and putting together a advocacy program for the seniors where I'll go into the home with them and sit down and find out what their needs are. Nice. And, uh, personalize it for them. Personalize it, yeah. And sure. they really, really appreciate it. And I have a lot of fun with it. I bet I really you do. do. Yeah, I bet and, you're good at that, too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just, just having a great time. Good. So it sounds like back in the day, it used to be like a Tupperware party. People would come to the living room, and they'd, uh, but they'd learn weatherization instead of burping their Tupperware. Um, do you remember that, right? Probably you remember burping your Tupperware. Uh, yes, I yes. don't know. Yeah. You don't know? Okay, never mind. So, um, but now you have the workshops. Where are they held? All over. We have them at churches, community centers. We have private workshops that are translated into different languages mm. or for, say, um, secret places like a domestic violence shelter oh, we've given workshops so and we have a lot of public ones some are at our office but really they're just everywhere sun schools are oh, yeah. really a uh, popular place oh, uh, we give workshops yeah. for Wix all kinds of groups so if somebody has a group of people um, that they're like wow you know they're lower income they could really benefit from the class if people come to anybody can come to the class Bill Gates can come to the class. I wish Bill Gates would come to the class. <laughs> um, 
Anyone I bet can he come has somebody to the do his weaponization <laughs> for him. Probably. Maybe somebody can go to the workshop for him. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so people come to the class and they learn really simple, do it yourself, easy, affordable ways to um, save energy in their homes. But those that meet our income guidelines and live in our service area, which right now is City of Portland, they can get a free kit of materials worth about $150. Wow, that's yeah. a great deal. Yeah. So the service area is just anywhere in the city boundaries, City, Pretty city much. of Portland. Yeah. And they're usually held in the evening. Okay. Uh, usually six to eight is our most common ones or on the weekends. Charge mm -hmm. for the workshops. Workshops are free nice. and they're family friendly. So people can bring their children oh, uh, with great. them. That's children great. are welcome. Mm -hmm. So give me an example of some simple do-it-yourself things that people can do to, to weatherize their homes. Okay. Something that they might learn in a workshop. Our focus is really on draft stopping. Mm. This is great because renters can mm -hmm. also uh, use these things. So we have these. Um, this is the part I want to hear. These <laughs> are. I need for, <laughs> for me. So we use these internally mounted vinyl storm window kits, which is a fancy way of saying plastic in your windows. Um, you might be familiar with the kind you put up with some sticky tape and you take mm -hmm. a hair dryer and it shrinks up. So this is that at the next level. Okay. So this is held on with an adhesive track that has a groove in it and this, this locking strip that fits into it and this vinyl, four mm -hmm. mil vinyl snaps in, kind of like a big Ziploc bag. Oh, okay. You can picture it yeah, that way. Yeah. But it's really, really clear. It doesn't sag or you know, it's not all wrinkly and things. It gets, you, can still you can't see tell. The yeah, you can't tell that it's <laughs> really? in from the outside. Oh. And how hard is it to install? <clears throat> it's pretty easy. The workshop's two hours and we talk about how to install window kits. There's door weather stripping. So if you've ever been in a house where you can see light coming in around your doors or I can or feel, feel it underneath my door. I can feel, you know, so that, I'm always sticking a towel down there or something. You that's know? really easy to fix uh, You can, with a $5 door sweep. It's called a door sweep fits on there. You just screw it on and it'll stop that draft from under your door. Um, caulking, silicone caulk mm. is a really easy, very cheap way to stop drafts around your windows. Um, depends on the age of the house and right. you know what's going right, on with right. it. But even behind your outlets can have a yeah, draft. Yeah, I've felt that before. And with a 10 cent piece of foam, you can uh, stop the drafts coming in through your outlets. <laughs> um, I, you supplied us with some pictures, so maybe we can pull some of those up and, and look at some of those while while we're talking here. What, what are we looking at here? Is this so? That's, that's the window the, kit. About? That's the right. Ziploc kit. So you can see how that tracking is being pushed mm -hmm. in and holding the plastic on. And if you step back, the win the plastic is on that window, the yeah, picture to the tell. right, and you can't really tell other than the fact that it's a little shiny. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, and it's reusable. They last three oh, to really? five years oh, typically. Yeah. So you can take it off and use it the next year. Nice. Absolutely. This is some door weather stripping going in. That's uh, Rosalie. She was at AmeriCorps with us last oh, year, nice. and she's actually still works with us now. So she's installing door weather stripping, and the one on the left is a white door weather stripping, and that is what blocks the gaps around your doors, around the sides and around the top. Oh, okay. uh, it's really pesky, so Good. that Good does a great job fixing it. So. When when you go out and weatherize somebody's home, you, it, say you say you do that for seniors sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, is there do you charge for that service? No, nope. nope. that's a free service, and we work with volunteers. Like Artie has definitely gone mm -hmm. out and weatherized. We have about I think last year we had 240 volunteers go that's out great. into homes and do all that weatherization in one day. <laughs> lots of <laughs> lots wow. of windows, doors, and we make repairs at the same time. So installing so, grab bars or Oh, that's Handheld right. shower heads, things that's like wonderful. that. Wonderful! I didn't realize that you did that too. That's yeah. super. Yeah. And is that kind of where you come in when you go out and do a? Um, do you do like an assessment when you talk to the people? You say you go into the seniors' homes and kind of talk to them. Right, and I kind of we give them a, a notebook mm -hmm. um, with informational flyers and brochures in there from different agencies and resources. Okay. And uh, when they go out to do the assessment of what needs to be done, they drop that off. So when I go in, I go through it with them okay. and start questioning them and getting down to details and um, getting them comfortable with me so they start providing me with right. information of what so they, they may need. So they trust you a little bit. Right. Yeah. And so I you know, give them the information I can. And if they have, let's say, legal issues um, or... Um, 
fraud issues or whatever, I refer them on to Elders in Action uh, yeah. because the of their personal, right, <laughs> yeah. and their personal advocacy program. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of thing I do. If I can answer it and help them, yeah. I'll do that. Isn't it great the way the different nonprofit organizations work together and support yeah. each other? I mean, yeah. Yeah. where we'd be with a lot of, oh, a lot of the ones that we have here. So you do the weatherization <coughs> workshops, and, and people can find out where they are and when they are on the website. Mm -hmm. But if they want to schedule one for a particular group, say a neighborhood association, mm -hmm. could they contact you and maybe have you come to a meeting and do a two-hour workshop, something like that? Yeah, absolutely. This time of year, uh, we're pretty, pretty booked busy. out. Yeah. But come uh, September or August, it's a great, it's the perfect time to give us a right call and say, hey, make some, get on that calendar because it fills up pretty fast. Yeah, do it before... Uh, Everybody, yeah, is everybody else and does. Really realizing yeah, they need absolutely. It. <laughs> and then the lead poisoning prevention workshops, you also have those too. Yeah. It, lead poisoning prevention, that's just like being aware of where there might be lead in your home, or what, what's that like? So, lead is lead paint is the biggest hazard, mm -hmm. and it comes from housing that is pre 1978, pre 1950, especially. And lead paint isn't really having a problem when it's under your layers of latex paint right. on the wall. Right. That's not so much the issue. Where there is an issue are where there are friction points in your home. So say you have a double hung window that's got you know, 30 layers of paint on it and it's going up and down and it's grinding lead paint against lead paint and it forms this lead dust. Right. So we talk to people, um, well lead is, lead is harmful for children six and under, it can cause brain injury and um, it can actually cause a problem for the fetus in utero if a pregnant mm. woman uh, were to get exposed to lots of lead, say from a remodeling job, for oh, example. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what we talk to people about is, well, you know, is there lead in your home? We have some testing materials to see if mm -hmm. it's even an issue. And then we talk about lead safe cleaning so, uh, which is basically cleaning with soap and water. So instead of that windowsill that may have lead dust on it, instead of dusting it with a feather duster, kicking it up everywhere, uh, we're like, down. you know, wiping it down with soapy water and like really washing it, making sure that your vacuum has a HEPA filter in it, which is mm -hmm. blocks lead from blowing up in your face. And we actually loan out HEPA vacuums to people that have taken the class so that they can do lead safe cleanup if That's they need great. to. That's great. So what other things do you do that, that our viewers should know about? You have the lead workshops, you have the weatherization workshops, you provide the kits for people that qualify, mm -hmm. is, that, is that correct? What else do we need to know about? Well, so to support the um, free services that mm -hmm. we do, we do have some fee for service oh, services. Okay. So we now have we can't say the prices on the air, but you can tell us what, what services That's are. fine. The prices are complicated, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, one of our, our new thing is actually we've gotten into community home performance. So this is when people want insulation, they, and they have the money to um, pay for it. Insulation or a new furnace or a new water heater. And you know, there's a lot of tax rebates that mm -hmm, are out mm -hmm. there. So we walk people through, okay, so here's kind of, we'll do an audit and um, we have conduct, it's called a blower door test. So this is a big fan that goes inside your door and mm -hmm. it depressurizes your house and you can tell where there are air leaks. Oh wow. So based on that and some other tests, you know, we'll say here's what we recommend mm -hmm. and people can actually pay us for that service. Oh, great. We also train contractors how to do lead safe work. So the EPA requires if you're ever having work done on your home, especially of children, mm -hmm. um, and it's an old house, you really want it to be done in a lead safe way because preventing <laughs> poisoning yeah. is really the way to avoid that. So, um, and the EPA requires contractors to have a certain certification to be working on different housing. So do you different do housing. the certification? So we do the right. certification right. for contractors. Right. And we also sell our more unique retail, or we sell our more unique weatherization items, like the window kits you can't mm -hmm. really buy around here, and the door weather stripping, we order it from the East Coast. So we sell that as a fundraiser right. as well. So if people exceed income guidelines or say we can't serve Gresham, for example. Right, right. Um, they can still get them. They can still get them. And they yeah. can still come to the class and learn all the great ways to affordably weatherize their home. That's great. Well, we're just about out of time. So um, if people are interested in finding out more, attending workshops, any of that, your website, that would be the place to go? Yes, definitely. Or call us. Communityenergyproject.org. <laughs> Talk to Artie when she 
answers the phone yes. in her nice and friendly <laughs> manner. She'll take you to the right place. Yeah. I'm sure she will. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for being on here to tell thank us about you. the Community Energy Project. Sounds like you're very busy but doing super work. So yeah, thanks for, very much. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. You bet. And don't go away. We'll be right back. We have lots more to talk about here on Community Hotline. We'll be back in a few minutes. the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Want to help homeless animals? There are countless volunteer opportunities with Multnomah County Animal Services. There's always a lot to do when caring for almost 10,000 animals a year. Our shelter is at the forefront of animal care with some of the most progressive programs in the nation, and we depend on volunteers to keep those programs running. From showing cats to potential owners, to training dogs in the shelter, to fostering a shelter pet in your home, you can help your community by volunteering your time and talents with animal services. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Volunteer. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio, and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you can tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, then contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art. It's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organize to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stance on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League, League of Women, Women Voters, Voters of East Multnomah, Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media. limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion.
Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And with me now, I have a couple people representing Chick Tech. If you don't know anything about Chick Tech, well, you're going to find out tonight. We have with us the founder and executive director, Janice Levenhagen Seely. Welcome. Thank you. And Thompson Morrison, uh, you're the father of a, a young woman who attends Chick Tech, correct? Mm -hmm, that's and right. also the um, CEO of Fuse Insight and a board member of Chick Tech's fiscal sponsor, which is Tech Start. Did I get right. all that right? Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Thompson. I would like to start with you, Janice. Tell me. Chick Tech, is that, I, I think I read about it first on a, a Synergy web website. You had a yes. little posting about it, and I yep. never heard of it. And I thought, is that, a, is that a high school? Is it a workshop? What is it? So <laughs> right. give me a little background on, on how Chick Tech started, what it is, and, yeah. and what your mission is. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, Chick Tech's goal is to get and keep girls and women in high tech. And we do that by creating fun, exciting, hands-on events. Um, our... Um, our first, um, we basically have three tracks that we're working on, and we're, we're a new nonprofit. We started in uh, November of 2011. So, quite so new, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so fairly new, although yeah. sometimes it seems like forever. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so our, our big track that we're working on right now is Chick Tech High School. Um, we also have uh, Chick Tech Career, and then we're working on a joint program that we haven't even named yet um, with Code Scouts. And that's basically going to be providing um, projects for women to work on for um, community organizations so that they can learn how to uh, code um, and actually be doing something worthwhile with their skills. Wonderful. I got some yeah. good hands-on experience. and yeah. yeah. So the reason that I started Chick Tech was because um, back in 2006, I graduated from OSU with a computer engineering degree. And uh, computer engineering has about 8% women. Wow. And uh, it's kind of stressful. That's really low. Stressful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, it's one of, one of the lowest. I believe electrical and computer engineering are two of the lowest, or, around the same amount. And then um, computer science is around... 18% right now. Um, and when I graduated, I realized that the idea of doing an interview terrified me. And I, it was just the worst torture that you could think so of. So interviewing for jobs in that industry, I, exactly. that, in that field? Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, I don't know if you've heard of the imposter syndrome before, but oh. it's basically, it hits um, men and women in um, careers that's do that are dominated by the opposite gender. And um, so it could be male nurses right, and, right. and women in technology. Um, and so basically, no matter how good you are at something, no matter how many accolades you get, you always feel like you're an imposter and eventually uh, somebody's going to find you out. Wow. So the idea of, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, the idea of an interview in that situation when you're feeling like that is the most terrifying experience. And so I ended up leaving engineering. Really? After wow. all of that work. Um, and I ended up going back for my uh, MBA, and I, um, you know, did my MBA, and then I got out, and I worked for a little bit, and then I managed to find myself back in technology because that's what I love, and I'd like to, um, through Chick Tech, make it so that women feel welcome in technology, and they feel like they aren't imposters because they're surrounded by other women who are just like them, and they're all equally talented and they all have something that they can give that's unique. Um, that's wonderful. So, yeah. That's wonderful. That's, <laughs> that's a great reason for doing it, I mean, yeah. to prevent others from having to go through what you did. Exactly. How about you, Thompson? Your daughter is involved in this organization? Yeah. Um, but my role is, is multi multifaceted. Okay. Um, I'm, on, I'm a member of the board of directors of the Technology Association of Oregon. Okay. And um, have been very involved with the economic development strategies for this whole region in that industry. And one of the greatest challenges that we have is talent. And mm. so I saw that from a perspective of the industry that we um, are desperate for uh, good talent to go into that, in that uh, industry. At the same time, I'm, I'm looking at that part of the picture, I'm looking at my daughter who is, was at that point a, a freshman in high school and, and wanting to actually follow down to learn more about technology and actually start learning how to do some software coding and realizing that um, as a parent within the Portland, within Portland Public Schools is where she is, that there were very limited avenues for her to uh, actually enter into this field where we were desperate for talent. And there was a huge chasm and a, a huge gap. And so 
I was actually looking at it from two perspectives right. and realizing that this was actually a, re a very, very significant problem, not only for me as a parent, but also for us as a community. And so one of the great challenges is, um, is to bring uh, young women um, into this field. And so that um, my daughter, in fact, had taken some uh, coding classes uh, during the summer um, as a freshman and then decided that she no longer wanted to go into software or anything technology related. And I was wondering why that was and she had lost all interest on in it. And then I had mentioned to her about Chick Tech because um, I became aware of it through uh, Janice and she became, all of a sudden this got reignited and I realized that for her she needed to find her cohort, her friends of other girls who also wanted to do it because she did not want to be an outlier. Right, she didn't want to be the, the odd man. <laughs> the out. odd, exactly. Yeah. Well, especially, yeah. especially in high school. Especially oh, yeah. in yeah, high school. Yeah, you want to fit Critical. in then. Sure, yeah. sure, that makes sense. And so that the idea of allowing girls to come together and, play and, and actually explore this allows them in a safe way to all of a sudden open up these, this whole, all of these uh, possibilities. So in the process of that, I also then became then um, the, the president of, of uh, Techstart, which is the 501c3 educational foundation for the TAO. Oh. Okay. So that all these pieces oh, now came is. together <laughs> and we began to say, and then we said, oh, well, t the Techstart can now be to support this, this program that has economic development reasons, but also I have a personal desire to sure. have my daughter have a sure, sure. So right. I'm very committed to this because I have, I see it from many, many different sides. And I think that uh, these types of programs um, are really critical for our kids. Uh -huh. You make the perfect uh, person for, <laughs> for the board because <laughs> of your different perspectives there. You're not right. seeing it from just one one yeah. vantage point. And, and what a great untapped market there is, all these women. I mean, there's, there's got to be a lot of women out there that have the, you know, that are interested in doing this, but they have not been encouraged yeah. or supported. Yeah, well, let me tell you a little bit about um, Chick Tech High School, which will put a little bit of perspective on, on your daughter um, getting excited, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, so um, our big event for Chick Tech High School is actually coming up. It's January 26th and 27th, which is a weekend. Um, two full days, about nine to five, um, and it's for a hundred high school girls. And um, they, it's at Portland State. They basically get to choose one of seven workshops that they get to participate in. So it's not just a little tiny sampler where they right. play with something for an hour and then move on. It's 10 hours of um, completely project-based, um, hands-on oh, time. So they're actually working on a project and learning the skills. And a, a lot of them have not ever done any programming, ever played with any hardware before. Um, and so they'll get to come and they'll get to be with their cohort of all these other women, young women in their, um, in this area. Um, Are these all high school age kids? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And we focused on sophomores and juniors. Um, and however, now that we're, we're getting closer, we have a few spaces still open, first come, first serve. Um, so whoever, um, if there are people out there who have, uh, daughters or if there are high school <coughs> girls watching and they'd like to sign up, they can always go to our website. It's chicktech.org. Um, C-H-I-C-K-T-E-C-H dot org. Yes, yes. exactly. Okay. Um, and it's, it's fairly easy to find the participants page. It's called Participants. <laughs> um, yes, it's very fancy. fancy that. Yes. <laughs> um, and so our seven workshops, I can usually remember all seven of them. I don't know, so, something about lists are always <laughs> hard. So we have three, uh, three hardware ones. One is through Free Geek. Um, where uh, 10 girls get to build their own computer and take it home. Uh, okay. Robotics, um, where they get to build their own robot and take it home. Wow. And um, microcontrollers, where there's, there's two projects. One, they're going to actually get to do a, uh, um, create their own musical instrument. And then the other, they actually get to what I call retrofitting stuffed animals, where you can make it um, do different things when you press its paw. So you actually get to bring oh, in yeah. your own stuffed animal to oh, tinker fun. with. <laughs> As long as you're okay with maybe cutting yeah, them up just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Do um, a little surgery. Yeah, and then we have a, a one called Designing Experiences. We have, um, which is software interface design, um, website design, gaming, and uh, smartphone apps. Wow. So those they're are, all really And those fun. are all very relevant. Those are things that I yes. can imagine would really interest a lot of kids. Yeah. Now, who do you have... Um, 
running these workshops? Where do you get the people from? Yeah, so all seven of our workshops are created by a team made up of um, men and women who are tech professionals in the community. And so they're, the teams are between, I think, four and eight people. Um, so we end up having quite a few um, active volunteers, which is really great. great. And right. I'm really excited for the girls to meet all of them because they're really awesome people and they're so excited about providing this uh, this to the girls. And all, I believe most of our workshops are created from scratch and they've, they've taken bits and pieces of what's, what has worked from other, other workshops. Um, those are fabulous. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's amazing, like, how the volunteers get so excited about it. Like, when things are going well, you know, there's always yeah. where th they get kind of stuck. But when things are going well, they just light up and they are, they have a purpose. You know, right, sometimes right. it's hard to do that. And so I almost, um, I call, uh, that's almost our secondary purpose for Chick Tech High School is it's, to it's get the, our volunteers, volunteers happy. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. Oh, and at the end of the, the weekend, we actually have a tech show. Um, and what that is, is basically an hour and a half. It's the 27th from 4 to 530. Um, and we're inviting the community to actually come and see what the girls have created. That's and it's, it's free to the public and they can, uh, you can RSVP on the website. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically like a science fair. So the yeah. girls can see that the community is really excited about what they're able to create and they get to be, you know, in the spotlight. Yeah, give some, some little pats on the back and some encouragement and some support to continue yeah. doing that. Yeah, well, exactly. That's great. So will your daughter be participating in that? Do you know? Oh, you know, it was so much fun for her to go through all of those lists. And uh -huh. we sat down and we talked about what each one of the different modules were. And it was really interesting for me to watch her discernment process and how what attracted her and what didn't, because as a parent, you're always trying to figure out, trying to understand what are, where are the passions, the hidden passions uh -huh. of, your, of your child. And what's interesting for me is that rather than the software part, she really wanted the hands-on hardware aspect really? of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, the thought of actually building a PC really excited her. Oh, that's so because great. Because she thought, wow, I'm going to learn how a CPU works and how a motherboard works and how this... And it's like, really? That's interesting. I didn't, where, you you know, it's you like glimpse, I didn't that. even know that that's what she would have been fascinated with. That's pretty with. cool. That's pretty cool. Now, our time is going really fast. So <laughs> let's tell me about the career and the, and the groups. The yeah, other, well, the other let me tell you yeah, real quick about career since the groups aren't really. Oh, that's new. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so career yet. is basically going to be giving women of, of any age the chance to do the same kinds of things as the mm -hmm. girls are doing. Um, so that's taking one of the workshops and doing it monthly. So say okay. the software interface design may be in June and in July would be robotics. Okay. Um, and it's a sliding scale fee so that we can hopefully at least cover its cost and maybe part of uh, Chick Tech High School. Um, but our goal is to um, keep the women who are in high tech in high tech by giving them new skills, creating networking opportunities, um, Etc. and basically yeah. giving them back that spark and that That's passion great. that um, brought them into so tech they won't in the have first to place. suffer from this imposter syndrome. Exactly, when they're out right? There. Yes. They, they already they already have the confidence. Yeah, to get out yeah. There. And then and then there's so many women out there who've never had the opportunity to build their confidence in um, the technology field. Sure. And so this would be a really um, low stress environment where they can come in and they can learn how to build a website or they can learn, That's you know, so they never right. got to do robotics in high school. Now they get to build their own robot and take it, it home it and play with close it. To when I was in high school, yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh, Thompson, what, what does the organization need? Donations, volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> You, Jazz is probably better yeah. to answer that. Yeah. Well, than we I definitely am. we want to make sure that we fill up because our volunteers have been working so hard on their uh, so if you their know projects. Of girls so if you know, yep. If it, everybody, um, if you know of any girls, direct them to the website. Um, we're obviously, you know, nonprofit taking donations. We also created Chick Tech T-shirts. So if anybody wants to order a Chick Tech T-shirt, they're uh, they're pretty cool. I like them. And they're for sale and on your website. Okay. Yep, and then um, also definitely come to the tech show and check out uh, what they've created. Great. Well, we'll direct everybody to the website. I'm going to go post something on our Facebook page and, and nice. let all my friends, my personal <laughs> Facebook page, let all my friends know that have young girls yeah, that, you yeah, know, for sure. check it out. I think that's great. Thank well, you. We are out of time. That went way too fast. There's a whole <laughs> bunch more questions I have for you. So maybe you can come on again yeah. later and, and kind of update us on what's going on, especially Thank after you. you get the, the groups up. Yeah, yeah, out about it'll that. be fun. So if anybody's interested, has girls they know that might be interested, go to your website. We'll go from there. Thank you, Thompson. Thank you, Janice, so much for being on Thank here you. tonight. Thanks for watching this. Uh
segment of Community Hotline. We'll be right back in a few minutes, but be sure to check out Chick Tech on their website. I'm Monica. Free GED classes. Are you ready? Classes gratis de inglés. Yo estoy lista. Transportation for free. I'm ready. Classes gratis de computación. ¿Qué listos? We're, We're ready. ready. Come to listos. If you can do it, you can do it. What am I supposed to do with all these corks? Turn them into a cork board. What about all these floppy disks? How about a fantastic journal? Hmm, I wouldn't learn how to make cool things like that. Well, come on down to Scrap. Scrap has monthly workshops where you too can learn how to make great things. We provide everything you need. For more information, call 503-294-0769 or go to www.scrapaction.org. Scrap, create more, consume less. Being a star was my guardian angel when my life was in shambles. They helped me find counseling and shelter. Being a star is great. They helped us pay our utility bills. And find health resources. I'm in college now because being a star helped me find scholarships so I could put myself through school. Call 503-823-4000 to find out if being a star can help you. Gracias, being a star. What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Help provide services to thousands of your neighbors. Sound impossible? 1,700 members of your community are already doing this, and so much more, by volunteering with Multnomah County Library. Library volunteers help their neighbors by teaching computer skills, shelving materials, and promoting literacy in the community. The library provides a wide array of services, including lending popular books and DVDs, computer access, and life-enriching activities. Give a neighbor a helping hand and spend a couple hours a week at the library, making your community a better place. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Hi and welcome back. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Community Hotline and I'm glad you stayed with us because for our last segment tonight we're going to be talking with Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions and uh, Mount Hood um, Adult Daycare Center. And with us tonight we have Judith O'Connell who's the board president of Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions. Thanks for being here Judith. Thanks for having me. It's a good opportunity. Yes, well I, Mount Hood, uh, your organization is Real close. It's right in the, right in the area yeah, here. Yeah, 223rd and Gleason. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you do, what, what your organization is all about. Well, Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions stemmed from the business I opened a couple years ago, which was Mount Hood Adult Day Center. And the day center was really focused on getting our participants to feel independent and um, retain dignity and make them feel like they're going to a club where 
um, they could meet new friends. And, and who are the people that go to the adult day center? Uh, we work with um, everyone from Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, stroke victims, to somebody who's um, living with their uh, family and they just need some social interaction. Mm, okay. um, you need a break. Yeah, they need they need a break. You know, even um, husbands and wives, if they're together 24/7, it doesn't go well. Same thing happens with I your mother. You sometimes. need a break. <laughs> and unfortunately, as you age, your social circle just shrinks. And um, this is a way to open it back up and stimulate the mind. And so we were doing that and felt really good about it. But what we found is our caregivers needed at least as much support mm. and care. So we started our first support group, which grew into our second support group, which grew into our third wow. support group. So and there's a lot of need out there for that. There was a ton of need and ton of need for education. People didn't know where to turn. And so we were doing a lot of referrals. Um, and we wanted to put that all into a package so that we could receive additional funding through grants and other things so we could grow it and have more support groups and more support for those caregivers at home. Um, the scary statistic I bumped up again when, against when we started is, is that caregivers actually tend to or more often um, pass away before their loved ones. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. That's depressing. Yeah, it is. And, so, and, you know, I've I've been in a situation of being a caregiver before. It's very stressful. It's very hard. It's exhausting. And and the hardest thing that I remember is asking for help. Right. Is that something that you find? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have um, people come in and they say, you know, I don't. I'm not a support group type. <laughs> I'm just angry all the time. And um, that's you know absolutely true and then a couple months later they're going to the support groups and they found people who feel the same way and they can let go of the guilt and start to find solutions for that guilt, anger. The resentment. Yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't matter how much you love somebody yeah. if you're taking care of them 24 7 yeah. that's tough. It's, it's that's a tough lot of work. Because it means supplementing your own needs sometimes. Yeah. It's great work. Um, yeah. It makes you feel good on some days and some days it doesn't yeah. feel like a privilege. It feels like a burden. So tell me about the support groups. What what goes on at the groups? Is it is it just talking? What what? Um, they restructure around a topic, um, but our support groups lead the support group. You know, okay. we'll start with a topic. We'll talk about. There's coconut oils was very exciting recently. So everybody wanted to know more about coconut oil. Can it really reverse Alzheimer's? And so we did tons of research and talked about that. Wow. And inconclusive, surprise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, again, no miracle yeah, cure. Yeah. Um, so we talked about that and for a few minutes and then we go around and we ask everybody how they're doing and what the group can help with them with. And if you get a group of uh, 12, 50 year old to 90 year old, we have 90 year olds in wow. our support groups, women. You that's got a caregiver? A, yep, yep, women and men. That is a wealth of information. Um, if you're in the beginning of the situation, there's somebody who's already been through it. And so it's really nurturing for folks to do that. Yeah. Uh, support groups have a higher efficacy than even one-on-one -on -one counseling, wow. which I thought that was another That's amazing statistic yeah. I came up against. Yeah. And, you know, if you think about just Alzheimer's, um, every 70 seconds somebody's diagnosed with Alzheimer's, mm. that means every 70 seconds there's a caregiver out there going, what oh, now? No. What, what do I do now? Yeah. Yeah, how do you know, I read recently an article about um, your organization in Boom Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, that was it, correct? Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. and I know November was National Caregiver Month. Yes. And uh, I was reading about the, a couple whose daughter was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and yeah. she was like 54 years old or something yeah. like that, which appalled me. Yeah. You know, scary, I thought, oh my, yeah, scary scary, stuff. it's very scary. It's very scary. And so the caregivers were, you know, her parents who were yeah. in their 70s. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can imagine they yeah. probably could use all the help they could get. They did. They but they, they did. had great things to say yeah. about um, about the support that they got. Yeah, caregivers and um, tend to want to give more than they take, and uh, Luther and Betty are no exception to that rule. Um, they've been great supporters of us, and we've been supportive back to them. Um, all the way through the process. Their wow. daughter's uh, currently living in a community, um, but they're continuing to um, come to the support groups and get the support they need. Um, our support group isn't just, you know, people will ask me, well, can I go to the support group? I don't have anyone at the day center. Well, it's not just for people at the day center. We have people whose loved ones have passed away, and they're in the transitions group. 
Um, oh, okay. People tend to do what they've always done. And if you've been a caregiver for nine years, a lot of women will jump right back into that caregiver role. And we wanted to give them an opportunity to explore what they want to do next. And they go to movies and, you know, just hang out and try to just figure out who they are now that kind they're not giving them full-time caregiver. To do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's what the transitions group is for. But they're open to everyone. It's not just for oh, folks that great. use the day center. Now, Tell me about Memories in the Making. Oh, it's a very exciting project that um, Alzheimer's Association um, is bringing it from the East Coast, and um, we're going to be their pilot project for it. Uh, there's a lot of early onset that's happening, and that's what you were talking about earlier right. with that um, gal that got diagnosed at 52. Okay. Um, and there's things that you can learn even when your memory is fading, and art is one of them. You can become a better artist with Alzheimer's, you know, it's hard. You probably aren't going to be a better chemist, <laughs> but you can be a better artist. That wow. part of your brain, your art will get better and better. Really? And so it's a great way to introduce success in a situation Ugh. where daily failures yeah. are happening. So, because it must be so frustrating, especially in early oh, stages when you know what's yeah. going on, but you can't stop it. Right. But to be able to have some successes, that's great. So, so what's going on? This is you're the pilot project, so yeah. that means that the Alzheimer's yep. is it Alzheimer's Association? Yeah, the Alzheimer's Association is um, screening everyone for us um, at the day center. Uh, no, they uh, call the Alzheimer's Association um, hotline. Oh, okay. And then they'll screen everybody, and we'll have about five to six people in the class, and we're going to run them every six weeks. And it's a six week long class and um, you'll come in and uh, the paper's out in front and we'll talk about different topics. It's a great way um, to bring up old memories. You know, we can mm. be talking about fall if we're doing leaves. Um, our first topics are gonna be in the spring, so that's always fun. Everybody's got great spring memories. Yeah. <laughs> It's when we're the most ornery, so. Is that, is that when I we're the most so. ornery? Okay, so. well, that's your memory. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, it's, is it an art class, in, but in, incorporate, I mean, are they drawing, painting while they're talking about art? What, what? It's more of a series of experiences than it is class. I'm not going to try and teach them um, to do, uh, become artists, but we're going to try to have um, experiences that build on each other. Um, the tools that we have are first notch um, art uh, tools. That we're doing watercolors and we have watercolor pens. Um, our, the gal that came in, Margaret, came in from Alzheimer's Association and she set us up with just wonderful materials. Mm. So it doesn't feel like construction paper and crayons. That's the worst, you know. <laughs> right. You'd hate to come in wanting to learn about art and um, be part of that experience and then have that but it's just really nice materials and the art that's produced in these um, sessions are just amazing wow yeah. so if someone is interested in if they have know somebody who has alzheimer's or somebody has alzheimer's and they're you know able to to contact you um they contact the alzheimer's association if they want to be part of the memories in the making they can contact us at our um at Mount Hood Adult Day Center, okay. and then we'll um, refer them to the Alzheimer's Association, and they can go through that process. Um, and if they'd like to be part of the support groups, they can call that 503-512-7373, and that number will um, bring you right to me, actually, <laughs> and they'll talk to me. Good. Or um, we have Michael McDuffie, who leads all of our support groups, and has does an amazing job from us since we He's started. all of them, huh? Yeah, yeah, he really does great. Um, so he'll, he's also on the phones there and can answer questions both about memories in the making um, and, and the support groups. Wonderful. Now I mentioned earlier the um, November was a National Caregiver Month. Yeah. You had a big gala. Yes. Um, to celebrate uh, and to honor caregivers. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, it was, it was an amazing event. I. It, surpassed all my expectations really? oh, yeah good. well it was our first year so you're always very nervous your first no, i'm sure year. you have no idea if it's going to be <laughs> a success anyone's or anyone's going to come yeah. our target audience is usually at home um working very hard so they're hard to reach and mm -hmm. um, get their attention so i went to all the area support groups um, on the east side and i invited all the caregivers from those support groups in and asked them to give us the name of one person they thought they'd like to honor and we got the stories of each of them. So it was 10 caregivers and they came that night and they were honored. Mm. And there's posters up and um, 
So were you telling their stories a little bit? Or? Yeah, we yeah. well we left the posters up there. It's and that a, had they're a very on modest it? group. They <laughs> don't they don't consider themselves heroes, um, even though they're even going though they above, are. Yeah, yeah. above and beyond yeah. the Call of Duty every day. Give me an example of some of the uh, situations. I mean, I, we know about Luther and Betty. Yeah, Luther with their and Betty. Fifty some mm -hmm. year old daughter with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other caregiver um, situations? We have another one that came and started with us right after we opened um, a couple years ago and she was he was diagnosed early also and she fought all the way through his disease they tried every single thing they could to um, delay it and make it work well you know to right. get through it um, and when they came felt like well I don't really want to go to a community because I'm not old I don't have a walker and yeah. he was fit I mean uh, yeah yeah we we would go on runs <laughs> <laughs> he was very wow, fit. Wow! Wow! Um, however, the he, mind wasn't, yeah, yeah, no, not you know, we, at all. And you, so probably a few pictures here. I don't oh, want to yeah. bring those up yeah, before let, I forget. Yeah, but, so but, go <laughs> but go ahead and, and keep telling me about it. Um, oh, for example, what? Oh, what is this? We have. Um, this is Dr. Elise Leland, and she's on the board of the prof, um, nonprofit. And not only is she an amazing doctor, she's also an amazing cellist, and she played for us. Um, at the gala that oh, night. Oh, that was that was at the event itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is our gardening club outside. They're planting herbs for our cooking club. So Fun. all the clubs are working together to keep us fed there. <laughs> Here we are in our workroom working on the um, scrapbooks. Uh, we have about eight scrapbooks now that have been all been done. Uh, that's Alicia uh, Van Loom. Uh, she's at Portland State, and she's been working with us for about a year and a half, and she's an amazing, I don't even know what they call them when they're scrapbook, scrapbookists. <laughs> scrapbook. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, this is both the hands of our interns and of our participants oh. and of our caregivers. Nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> this <okay>. is art. <laughs> that is art. <laughs> I love it. That's Kathleen Kennedy, and she's our horticulturist, and she leads um, uh, our gardening club once a week. Great. So she brings in really great stuff. And that's Sandy, and she's working in the cooking club. Those are sticks in chocolate, and they're making um, candies for bringing home to their caregivers as oh, gifts. Oh, nice. So like it's that. fun. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Yes. I'm hoping. <laughs> And we have a good time. <laughs> I bet you love the hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do work with some folks that are adults with disabilities. Um, this is Clancy, and she's getting her hair done. We have a salon right in the center, so oh, you can great. come get your hair done, a pedicure. Uh, ah, go home and feel good about yourself. Yeah. I like that. Mela Mendez. Um, we are always talking and honoring our past, and especially our veterans. And he's demonstrating um, his Air Force photo that his wife brought in. Oh. Yeah. Choking me up there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, we've got a lot of heroes that yeah. we work for. You yeah. know, like both the caregivers um, and our participants are right. often heroes. So before we run out of time, tell me a little bit more about um, we, that. If, peop if people have, um, if they're caregivers and they need some. I need a break. Mm -hmm. um, does it is it for any kind of caregiver the the um, your support groups? I mean, does it is it yes. just it's not just Alzheimer's, not just Parkinson's, no. it's any kind of it, caregiver. What we found is that the um, situation is very similar despite the disease, the feelings, yeah. um, the guilt that you feel when you leave. Um, I should be able to do everything for them, yeah. and you do feel that way. Yeah. yeah. And, should be able to be all of it. And, and what's wrong with me for not being able to do that? Yeah, you know? why can't I take care of this situation? Or why do I feel yeah. guilty? Why do I feel resentful? Why am I angry? And all the science and the statistics back up that not only will you be healthier and have a better quality of life by using a day center or bringing someone in and getting away, um, but they'll do better. There's less behaviors at home if you're using a day center. And there are several day centers in the, o or in the area. We're not the only one. There's also Lambert House. and. Um, a few others, so and I think we're the only two on the east side. But <laughs> there are other ones. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so, so if you if you're at home and you um, you needed some help, you could start with the support groups. It doesn't have to be a big first step. It can be small. Yeah. And the the support groups. Once you start, can you just go as needed? 
Yeah, or go, absolutely. I mean, do most people go on a really regular basis? Yeah. Once they? they get started, they tend to go every week. We have one gal that goes to um, all of the groups. Really? Yes. So she'll go to six support groups every wow. month. Wow. Um, and like I say, your age, your social circle gets smaller and yeah. smaller. So yeah. those are her friends, and that's her. You know, that's that's great. I want to say support group, but that's what they are. Yeah. They're her yeah. support system. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else that we need to know about um, Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions, the day center that I, we haven't covered? Um, just the memories and making is coming up. I wanted to make sure that we highlighted that happening. Okay. And um, I also want to thank the community for their support. Uh, the gala was amazing, and that was from the support of the local business owners and um, well, the you do it again. community members. Yeah, every year it's going to happen. Wonderful. First Thursday in November. So. Good. We'll look forward to it. And I'll have you on in, in uh, maybe September or oh, October. that would be great. That so would be great. people will not forget about that. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Judith, okay. for being on tonight. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you. And you're doing an important thing, and I, I'm sure the caregivers out there <laughs> salute you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us tonight on this episode of Community Hotline. I hope you've enjoyed our guest tonight. I know I have. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll see you here next week. When disaster strikes, emergency professionals may be overwhelmed. Can you care for yourself and loved ones until help arrives? Can you help neighbors amidst the chaos? Are you ready? Get ready. Join a community emergency response team and learn skills that will save lives. The City of Gresham offers free CERT training. Sign up for the next class and get ready. What is it like to have a loved one die? Each month, over 300 children and teens who have experienced a death turn to the Dougie Center for Grieving Children. Inside, they find a safe place where they can share their experiences and move through the grieving process. The programs at the Dougie Center are funded by private donations. Thank you for making it possible for kids like me to attend groups free of charge. The Dougie Center, because grief comes in all sizes.